Right You're all set here? Excuse me? Are you all set here? Well, yeah, there's nothing else, obviously, you can help me out with at this okay. point. Okay, so you're all set. So you can, you're going to go to IA right now, correct? Yeah, I'll okay. be there. All right. I'm going to be going. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be going. Okay. So you're going to stand I, here with your cell phone on? I thought, I thought you were busy. I thought you were a busy I am. man. I am so, busy. So you should, you should get to work. I, sh I should get to work? Is that what you're telling me? If you're busy. Are you we're going to have a problem between you and I. Doing? We're gonna do an interference. His body camera's on. His body camera's on. Stop. Camera. Stop. Stop. He has his body camera on. I don't on. care. Stop. Stop. I don't care. Stop. Stop. Right? Stop. I'm gonna. This is private property. I'm, gonna, okay? I'm not doing anything. You're not right. going to video get off. me and have an attitude. Okay. I'll get but off of it. I'm gonna tell you what right now, dude. I'm not the one. Okay? I gave you the information you needed, and I gave you your outlet. Right? You were given your outlet. No, you wanted to stand there and hold your cell phone in my face. is what you wanted to do. Yes, you do. Take your cell phone and go and make your complaint okay okay, okay. can i grab no, my cell phone right here i'll get it for you i'll get it for all right you. where's your car at? You where's your car at? where's your car at? i'm gonna go man i'm going i'm going all right no but where's your car i didn't even know where my car is at you were about to arrest me man for real I, I, I has your body camera on yeah my body camera is on buddy i'm trooper castell 1139 yep wow listen with, with the situation you were gonna that you're arrest going, me for real we're going to detain you or what the situation was going on man <laughs> You I'm leaving. Conversation, I'm leaving. Conversation's, I'm leaving. Conversation's over. All right. I'm leaving. Stop. I'm leaving. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks again for stopping in. Um, if you find these videos beneficial uh, or, or see their purpose, um, you know, please do like, comment, subscribe. Um, especially comment. That's what's really going to drive the algorithms. I'm trying to think of. Uh, interesting ways for people to leave comments. I guess it, it's a little repetitive, the videos, and you know most of this story before. This is just one of the, uh, when I reported my Havana syndrome uh, symptoms to the Connecticut State Police, and um, they insulted me uh, and bullied me out the door, um, which is an odd thing for someone in public safety to do. Um, but, uh, you know, I was thinking maybe leave, leave a comment, maybe a song lyric, I'll try to guess it, a famous quote you find interesting or a quote from a movie we can all you know uh reminisce about or, or remember or have a laugh at something like that just to keep it a little light because it's dug, it does get a little repetitive yes you know every police officer in the country knows it has known it isn't doing anything about it we know that um, it just gets a little heavy sometimes so um i went to troop c oh and quick advice never go to the police to call them have them come to your house, have multiple cameras going, um, document everything. They will lie. The least trustworthy people in society are working as police officers in the United States right now. They lie constantly. Uh, they're lazy. There are some good cops. We know that, but it's 49% or less. Most of them are lazy, lying sadists that do not value human life, uh, and they have no intention of doing their jobs. So that's an unfortunate reality. So um, I went in to report that uh, my dog had, had fallen ill. And what I exactly what I said to Trooper Robert O'Connor at uh, 1.04 in the afternoon at Troop C was that my dog had um, eaten an object from within the throwing distance of the road. I thought this was and nearly died running up a $1,000 vet bill, $900 vet bill. Uh, she was left at the animal hospital overnight to save her life. Um, and that I, I was concerned. I suspected that this could be, that this was uh, suspicious. And I suspected that it could be criminal in nature. I did not see anyone do anything. I had no idea what happened. I brought it to his attention because I was naive at the time. And I thought the police, you know, cared about public safety and wanted to document this just in case this was going on. How does how do I know this hadn't been reported by another neighbor, someone else in town? Maybe this was had been reported by somebody else. If I don't come forward, then they don't know. You have to come forward and you have to tell them and he should be receptive. He was the complete opposite of receptive and in fact refused to even document it. So I told him that, hey, I just want to bring this to your attention, you know, for documentation purposes. He refused to do so, called me a liar, and threatened uh, and threatened to arrest me. Um, I pointed out that this neighbor here, this private investigator and his son, 
had been caught stalking me, harassing me. They drove by my house all hours of the day and night. We know this story hundreds of times, parked in front of the house at midnight, laid on the horn, drove away, blah, 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 blah. Um, he knew that. He admitted that he had read this report already. Um, and that he knew the neighbor had admitted to it. He knew that I had no criminal record, but these people do have a criminal record. The father here had been arrested for drunk driving, reckless endangerment, running from the police just two months before this day. I'm reporting this in September. He was arrested, I think, in July. So he's got a criminal record. I don't. O'Connor threatens me, calls me a liar, right? I then say, well, I also feel for the sake of public safety that I need to bring to your attention that I was having some very unusual, and up until that point, I had some tests. I'd seen a neurologist, had a hearing test, but up until that point, un, uh, unexplained or inexplained, hadn't yet to be explained um, medical um, situations. I don't know what you want to call it. Sudden onset of tinnitus. Uh, we all know what it is now. It's a syndrome. Sudden onset of tinnitus. You know, headaches, uh, extreme fatigue, you know, all the stuff that the diplomats were reporting. Um, this was, of course, in September. It was announced uh, in uh, ooh, late August, about a year, excuse me, a year, about a month before this. But in my defense, I, and I'll put, put up those documents. I did on another video. I, I don't know, it's not in front of me right now, but um, where I was reporting tinnitus, I actually went to the emergency room in early 2016. When I had the polymeropolis incident, where I was just like I thought I was going to die. I mean, I was having, you know, palpitations and and, uh, and 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 I just it was awful. It was the most unbelievable experience of my life. Sudden onset of tinnitus. I reported all those things. I'd already been seen by a doctor in 2016. Whatever. So, but look what this guy does. Look at the slanderous stuff that these cops do in these in these reports. And we know they lie all the time. Uh, and they always word it in some way that benefits them and hurts the public. Walk-in reporting multiple. I wasn't reporting it. It had already been reported. The guy had already admitted to it right here. So, again, it's always this bizarre lie NATO that they're on <laughs> tornado of lies. Breach of peace. That already happened. He believes that is not true. I use the same wording. You'll notice I, I believe, and friends have told me I'm, I'm very articulate and very careful and deliberate in my wording here. I never said I believe anything. I offered for him to help him understand, you know, as someone that works in public safety, why this might be happening. And I am absolutely a outspoken uh, uh, opponent of the failed, immoral, unethical, ineffective drug war that has filled up our private prisons with nonviolent people. Um, I am absolutely positively, I, I got some rice on the stove, um, an opponent of that. And there, there's, you know, that's a possible motive. You know what I'm saying? Like he believes he is targeted because of his, I don't believe anything. I just told him that. I had no idea what the motive is. If he had gone and investigated and gone back to the mechanics and asked them, hey, did you poison this guy's dog? Maybe he would understand a little bit better. If Trooper Loftus, who helped cover this up the first time around, had done a proper investigation, maybe he would realize that these people are, uh, this guy's a Marine, his son was in the Army, uh, they're both, you know, Republican nut jobs or whatever their political motivation is. They make money on the failed drug war. It benefits them. I don't know, man. I, I, you know, I don't know what the, the motivations are for these people. I never said he believes. But this is slanderous, the way he says this, to make it look like I'm in there like, these people are this and that. I never said a word about that. I have no belief. He lies. Lie, 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 lie. Sent installing cameras in his vehicle. I, I didn't. That's bizarre. I didn't say that. Um, he also, now I report physiological and negative health symptoms. Again, I do not attribute. Again, he lies and he slanders. This is what Connecticut State Troopers do all day long. They're so slimy. Health symptoms that he attributes to exposure to sonic devices. First off, I do not attribute it to anything. This is, if you know the timeline, this is, this is, in the beginning they were calling it sonic devices because people were having tinnitus. Of course, now we know it's microwave weapons. We understand from bio effects of not only the weapons, that it's radar systems, that it's satellite based, even though they're very slow to admit to that. 
but we know that it's microwaves. We know that now. But this is what it was being reported as. I reported this to him because, again, I thought the police cared about public safety, and I wanted them to have data that they could bring to whoever, I don't know, the FBI, the CDC, the FDA, and say, we think this is more widespread than, than it seems at first. A phenomenon the FBI has investigated numerous cases of. These symptoms prevent him from seeking employment. I didn't say that's bizarre. I had a part-time job. I don't know what this guy's talking about. Uh, no formal complaint for the record only, just in case. Right. So he reports it to no one. He refuses to document, and the Connecticut State Police are still refusing to document the near-death, three near-death instances of my dog. This happened three times. They're still refusing because they know that the primary suspect is this guy, and this guy is a former Marine turned private investigator. He's a buddy of theirs. They know him. They work with him professionally. This is exactly what they did in the Ahmad Arbery case where those two guys that worked for the state's attorney's office chased down that black guy and shot him in the street, and they had the video of it, and they sat on it for six months and tried to make it go away because they knew the guys. Obviously much less extreme than that, but same idea. Cronyism, crooked cops, protecting friends of theirs, allowing them to do whatever. And because they helped him and allowed him to get away with stalking me the first time, did that. And I never said that guy did it. I don't know. I just said, well, he was caught before, so he's the primary suspect. I want you to go talk to him and ask him if he did this. Um, because we can suspect that because he was allowed to get away with doing all of this, that he might have done something else. I don't know for sure. They wouldn't conduct an investigation. But think about this. I report this to a state trooper who does not do anything with the information. Now, the CDC and the FDA and the AMA already should have been compiling data on how many other people this has happened to to try to get a picture, uh, you know, a full picture of what's going on. But now we really understand. I mean, from the, C the CBS 60 Minutes report, you know, even the government employees, they're trying to cover it up. They're bullying them. They're trying to make them go away, just like Trooper Robert O'Connor did to me. I mean, look know what it's attributed to. I'm just telling you I'm reporting symptoms to you because I thought these people cared about public safety. So he slanders me. He does nothing with my information about these symptoms that I experience off and on. Sudden uh, onset of symptoms. They come and they go. They're consistent with the Vanna syndrome. He does nothing with that. Slanders me. Refuses to document and investigate the incidents with my dog. And again, I was very, very clear. I just, these are suspicious incidents and I want you to know about them. That's it. That's all I ever said to this guy. Um, but that's what they do. They're just liars. Um, so this is a recently, Great Lack, Lackluster is a great channel. I'm glad he has so many subscribers. This is a recent incident with another guy. Uh, I forget where he was. But He then notices correctional officer Brian Knipe leaning against the Justice Center building, smoking. Ironically, just 10 feet away from a sign that reads, no smoking or vaping within 50 feet of the building. And while the 50 feet policy may not be enforceable, the policy would certainly apply to the building's employees. Big G inquires about the posted sign. It don't look like 40 feet to me. Look like I'm up playing up against the building to me. Uh, yeah, right next to the building. I thought there was a, you had to be 50 feet away from the building, not leaning up against it. As a notification, I thought that was a state federal law in front of every federal and state building. Oh, it is? Well, we'll find out. What's your name, sir? What's your name and rank? 815-912. What's your name? What's your name? Yes, you do. Yes, sir, you do. All right, well, we'll find out. Getting paid in construction is tough. Send a notice with Level Set today so you can get paid. Level Set is. You, buddy. You. So he confronts this uh, corrections guy or sheriff's guy, whatever. A guy gets pissed off, and then he goes back to his house later to harass him. And this is what it what it looked like. And I wish I would installed the camera. Uh, it doesn't make me look good because I this happened hundreds of times. Um, but we'll just we'll just get to what this looks like here. Now, real quick. Make note of this, because this is very similar to me. The McKenzie guy and his son, their vehicles, was a blue Ford Explorer um, and a green Lincoln Navigator. And they had very specific stickers on them, identifying these guys are sticker lovers. It was all, just like this, all in the window, all on the sides, all over the everything. You know, Marines, NRA, you know, 
I'm a criminal or whatever they say. I don't know. Um, so it was obvious. We knew the stickers. We knew the vehicles very easily. So when I found them in the driveway at 23 Lindsay Lane, they were easy to identify. This guy had the same experience, right? We see the vehicle. He leaves. A few hours later. Later, Big G is at his home when a black SUV slowly drives up his street as though it is looking for a specific address. Once the vehicle comes within view of Big G's address, the operator blares on his horn as he passes. Big G begins recording from his cell phone on his porch and the vehicle returns. This is Correctional Officer Knipe's private vehicle. This is the same vehicle driving by Big G's home and blaring his horn multiple times. Under Tennessee Code 39-17-315, stalking is defined as intentionally and repeatedly following or harassing in a manner that causes fear. For a first-time offense, a stalker will be charged with a Class A misdemeanor, which is punishable by up to 11 months and 29 days in jail, and a fine of up to $2,500. One year or more is considered a felony. Officer Knipe likely used state resources to violate Big G's Fourth Amendment rights by running his information to find out where he lives or by obtaining it through a FOIA request he submitted earlier that day. But this incident is far from over. A few days later, Big G returned to the Justice Center, where he met with Lieutenant Burke Murray to file an official complaint. Either he got my tag or he got my name off the FOIA request, either one. But somehow, he found out where I lived because he came by my house honking his horn going up and down my road. Hey, you know, did you recognize yeah. the car? It's, he's got stickers it? all over it. I saw him. I even He goes up the hill honking. So you can see him going up my hill. Right. And by the time he gets to my house, you can tell he's going slow looking for house numbers. As soon as he gets in front of my house and can see my house number, he starts laying on the horn. Was your, your van parked there? Yes, it was. Okay. Right in plain view. So it's the same van you up here? Yes, sir. And so he goes up the hill and goes over. I was literally just like right down inside the kitchen, which is right there on next to the front porch. I heard it, so What's I go out. That's probably about five or so. So it's just a couple hours after. Yes, this was literally just a few hours afterwards. Um, yes, sir. And he went up the hill and turned around, so I got out my camera and started filming. Of course, I have security cameras as well. And I filmed him coming back down the hill, and he laid on the horn even harder coming back down because he saw me standing out there. As soon as he was able to see me, he started laying on the horn. And uh, it looked like he even flipped me off. I don't know if I got that on film or not, but as he was driving by, his window was down, his arm was out, and he, he, we lived eye to eye. Had you ever... I never met the man before in my life. Him, never seen him before. Not until that, that day. day. No, sir. What kind of vehicle is he got? It, it was like a black, smaller, mid-sized SUV. I don't want to know. I don't want to say what make or model it was. I got so this is exactly what it, what it looks like. Um, you know, admittedly, I have to take a lot of blame here on this because I didn't. Things were a little different then, and I, and I, I think that's a valid argument. Like. This is pre, you know, the world has changed so much in the last, this was 10 years ago when this whole thing really started. This is, things have changed so much. You know, you don't realize that people do this. Now we keep catching them doing it. You're looking out for it. You understand. But I had never met this guy before. I had no reason, you know, this, this McKenzie guy, this private investigator, you know, it's like the same template though. He probably, you know, the state police used their resources to give him my address. They saw some social media posts that they didn't like about, you know, uh, wanting to, to, you know, end the failed drug war, you know, nothing uh, threatening or violent, just, just, you know, they love the drug war. They're making money on it. They're seizing people's property. They're putting black people in cages or taking away voting rights. They're loving it. The police, it's their bread and butter. They don't want to give it up. Um, so it's understandable why, the, why Troop C would help these people get away with it. Uh, so this is where, this was my rental at the time. Uh, this was the house I owned. Now, again, this McKenzie guy is a criminal. I own this house. I'm a landlord. Um, 
you know, I'm taking this was before I actually did all the work. This was in the early days. Um, kind of funny here on the old Street View is a state Connecticut State Cruiser right here, State Police Cruiser coming up the hill. Um, he's not parked. This is just a still image, obviously. And right here is where the my dog was lured to. You know, we would be on the side of the house, and the dog would kind of come over to here, and she would come within throwing distance of the road. And this is where you'd do it. You'd come up the street. And you'd whip the poison food out, and it would land in here. And she just ate the object the first time. I need to think it's a hot dog. You know, people throw beer cans on my lawn, you know, just people are morons. But you just think it's a hot dog. And then two hours later, the dog almost dies and requires emergency medical care and can't move anymore. Um, so this is where it would happen. Uh, this is actually the old. And uh, the McCansics, they live up here. Um, so they would come down this road. They would turn the corner and probably head down to Willington Pizza 2, pick up their pizza and come back, go back up the road. They would go, you know, down 32. But this is how I eventually found where they lived is because they kept coming to, uh, from or to this road. And then this goes up and Lindsay Lane is, is over here about three or four miles away probably. Um, but, you know, it goes up, connects to another road, and you're like, well, it's got to be that road or any of the ones that branch off it. I eventually had to find them, of course, because Trooper Loftus refused to do his job because Trooper Loftus knew who the perpetrator was from minute one. He had the plate number and claimed he couldn't do anything with it. Um, but this is what these these cops do. I mean, they're criminals, and they're protecting criminals, and they're uh, that's stalking, that's harassment. And I'm going to go so far as to say, is it terrorism? What what's the definition of terrorism when a group of corrupt cops um, and private investigators, you know, do this to somebody deliberately? Is that terrorism? I don't know. Um, but this was the house. You know, I'm a landlord. I'm a property owner. I have no criminal record, and they're protecting a drunk psychopath that goes 100 miles an hour down the highway and and stalks and harasses his neighbors. So uh, really, the the point of this video was that I reported symptoms consistent with Havana syndrome to a state trooper and he insulted me and and threatened me and refused to report it to anybody else. I, I reported that my dog was poisoned. He wouldn't even put that in the report and they still are refusing to. So actually if you go up really closely here, it, it pans to a newer, um, this is all the work I did on the house and that's just irrelevant. Uh, you know, just painted everything, replaced a lot of stuff, uh, cleared all the land, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera opened all this up, cleared these areas, uh, did a lot of work. You know, I was a good neighbor. The town liked me. You know, I paid my taxes. I was a good neighbor. And, and people people like that when you take care of your house. Uh, all that being said, it, you know, this house, it's like this, owning this house, this is like owning a house in, uh, in East Germany or something like that. You know, it, yeah, I mean, we're five miles off the campus of Yukon. It was a good house. It was a great rental. But it, it's like, it's like owning a house in hell. So, yes, I was run out of town. My dog was not safe. She uh, was poisoned three times and then died in a suspicious accident. We're just going to put it that way. Um, these crooked, crooked uh, Connecticut State Troopers were protecting criminals. There was just no way. I wasn't safe. And I'm glad I got out um, with my life. But this is what they do. And, you know... It, Honestly, this is the kind of thing that was happening, you know, to, to people in urban areas, especially black and brown people. They're stuck there, or it seems, you know, if they don't have the, the means, the economic means to get out. But what happens is, is that someone like me comes along and I stood up for those people. And then the same crooked cops that are doing it to people who are more vulnerable or poor or non-white, then do it to me to retaliate against me for standing up for them, um, the police in the United States are a gang. They are criminals. Um, and there aren't, clearly are more bad cops than good cops. Uh, and I said time and time again, but, you know, I made a video earlier, though. There's a lot of positivity out there. Um, lawmakers that made this mess are trying to undo it and are in little ways. I mean, it might just be, you know, for show but they just voted to decriminalize cannabis. And that's the drug war is what made these cops so predatory. It put so much money in their hands. Uh, it turned them into incentivized, incentive-based policing and predatory policing and, and predictive policing and 
it, it really ruined the whole thing. So you're seeing a lot of good things happening there. Like these guys in Missouri, they understood like the, the police are not to be trusted. Uh, these two lawmakers here, and they passed the Second Amendment Protection Act so that uh, they could no longer use federal funds to enforce federal gun laws or federal resources. Um, so it's happening all over the place. The Tenth Amendment Center's got it figured out, and they've really realized that you got to chip away at certain areas first. Um, do not defund the police. Do not defund the police. I want to be very clear. Do not defund the police. End the drug war. Here's why. If you defunded the police, let's just say the Connecticut State Police budget was $1. With that $1, they would go down the road to Willimantic and they would try to get a, they would try to get a two for one. They would try to catch a brown person with a controlled substance. One, so that they could destroy that brown person's life. Two, they could take away their voting rights. They hope to find money on them so that they could seize and keep for themselves and bring back over to that villainous hive that is Troop C right over here. And then they could use that money to fund even more, go to Willimantic and look for some brown people, and then if they got a joint on them, take their money and say that it's drug money and seize it. See what I'm saying? You could defund the police all day long. If they had a penny left, they'd use that one penny for some predatory uh, incentive-based policing that benefits them, not the public, Right? So the Tenth Amendment Center understands that you need to end the drug war. You need to take away these incentives uh, that are that ruined the police in the first place. It's the only way around it. Never defund the police. Get rid of the things that turned them into predators. That turned them that 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 overfunded them in ways and gave them incentives to go and do all the wrong types of policing. So. Again, this is probably a 20-plus minute video. Uh, the Connecticut State Police are hiding and refusing to properly document criminal activity and are bullying and hiding people's reports of symptoms consistent with Havana Syndrome. I don't know that that's what it is. I just know that that's what I experienced, and I thought they cared and would want to know and try to compile that data and protect people, but evidently they only care about themselves. And that's